Well, welcome everybody to the third lesson in our SKU T series. If you missed the first couple, you missed a couple of important lessons. You find out how this chart is laid out. And the last lesson, we actually took a look at the LCL, LFC, and equilibrium level. Those were fun. Today, we're actually going to take a look at a few of these down here. We're going to take a look at surface base cape, mixed layer cape, and most unstable cape. These are fun things to talk about and we're certainly uh, going to do that here in this lesson where we basically break down how each of these work and what to look for with each. So this is a sounding from May 16th of this past spring in Central Oklahoma aka the National Weather Service in Norman. They launched this balloon in the middle of the afternoon. This was the 1 p.m. sounding slash 18z. This shows Again, this is all things you should be familiar with at this point. It shows, you know, good wind shear. Here's your temperature profile. Shows a little bit of a cap here with temperature and dew point. And of course, you have you could find your LCL if you wanted to, etc. I mean, you can do all that. So, all that's possible. But we're going to take a look today at the instability. Now, first things first. Let's take a look. Let, let's ask ourselves: What is surface-based instability? What is mixed layer instability? etc. Well, surface base cape or SB cape is simply calculated by lifting a surface parcel of air upwards in the atmosphere. Basically, the 76 over 60, that's what we use. Uh, that's this is the literal uh, calculation. You don't you don't go any further. This is exactly how you calculate your surface base instability. And because of that, you know, you lift it dry adiabatically until you get to the uh, LCL and then it just takes off uh, moist adiabatically at that point and that is your surface base instability. This is the amount of instability you would see realized if an updraft was lifting air from the surface into the atmosphere. Of course uh, though this is important to note surface base instability rarely is what you see realized during a day just because of the simple fact most updrafts aren't lifting this into themselves. 76 over 70 is not what most updrafts are going to end up doing. However, mixed layer cape, me or mean layer cape, or just quite simply ML cape, it refers to a parcel path which is taken from the average of the temperature and dew point values within the lowest 100 millibars of the atmosphere. This number is almost always smaller than SB cape, so it can be really mean. Uh, in that regard. It can take a lot of your juju out of the atmosphere as this sounding does actually show. Uh, th this is probably more realistic about what kind of instability is being realized with storms. Uh, this is because air rises uh, and as it rises it mixes with air surrounding it and so storms are typically going to be ingesting this air versus a pure surface based air parcel and the reason for this is simple. Uh, you know, look at this, you know, 76 over 70, but look how fast the dew point drops off just over the surface. It gets very dry in this sounding. And uh, again, the temperature also, same thing. But you see a lot of cooling and a lot of drying. It's actually uh, temperature from the surface is almost cooling dry adiabatically. And from there, I mean, you, you can see that that's a big problem. Just above the surface, it's cool and it's dry. I mean, that's that's not a very unstable sounding. Uh, and then, you know, you go up here and you have a massive cap actually in place as well. And uh, for the record, uh, it took a lot of work to get from here to storms on this day. Uh, for sure in OUN there was a lot of uh, a lot of uh, clouds and such this was just not a good day uh, in central Oklahoma at the time and as you can see you know your surface base cape it's 3523 that's because uh, if you lift a parcel from the surface it's quite unstable however at mixed layer it's 716 with 151 of that being sin I mean that's uh and we'll we'll talk about sin we'll talk about that in the cap at some point in the future but if you take a look, I mean, it's dry. It's, I mean, when you take a look and you start a ML a mean layer average a parcel, I mean, you're going to end up somewhere up in here, and then you just start lifting. I mean, that's not, it's not much cape, and so that's what happens oftentimes. You'll see storm chasers and uh, weather people really oftentimes they'll they'll buy into this right here. But the mixed layer cape is really what's more important when forecasting for severe thunderstorms. So that's what you're actually seeing realized. SB cape produces a lot 
bigger and meaner numbers for sure. I mean, you can see SB cape 6,000, 7,000 sometimes, but then the ML cape's like 3,000. That's because you usually have some dry air. It's cool and dry in parts of the lower atmosphere, and that's what you end up with. ML cape is prone to some errors, though. I do. This should be noted. Uh, it requires an accurate representation of the atmosphere's lowest 100 millibars versus SB cape. So on models and such, they can sometimes get this wrong. So SB cape's also useful in that regard. Uh, you know, SB Cape is certainly going to be accurate since you have real-time observational data to go off of. It's kind of easy if you have a reading of, you know, 78 over 71 to lift that parcel and get something. And you know, it's, you know, at least that's right. However, the opposite of this can also be true in the sense that if your surface moist layer is very shallow, this is uh, a very good example of that. Uh, you know, SB Cape will appear huge, but ML Cape will be a more accurate measure since it takes into account the drier air just above the surface and this is you know you're seeing that right here so what about moist or most unstable cape well mu cape is really used for elevated convection scenarios this is best said as you know when there's a surface inversion or you know your storms are based well above the surface elevating you know for example, in this scenario, your most unstable is 3523 because it's taken from the surface. But if this cap were a little bit more, you know, way out here or something, you had this monster surface inversion, your actual most, uh, your most unstable layer of air would be somewhere up in here, and you would get a you know more accurate measure of the atmosphere at that point. So this gives you the most unstable parcel of air in the atmosphere, the most unstable cape. So uh, there's a couple of ways to do it. Uh, a couple, one way is that it kind of just calculates from 200 millibars on down uh, air parcel path, and whichever one's the most, that's your most unstable, and that's what you see most used most often. And for the most part, in elevated convective scenarios, this is uh, pretty important. But you can also oftentimes get situations where your most unstable cape is taken from uh you know this one's 970 millibars but you know you can get it you know taken from 850 but your storms are actually based at the lifting is at 700 or something crazy like that it can happen so regardless that's the difference between surface base and mixed layer cape mean layer cape etc or ml cape we're just going to call it ml cape let's take a look at another sounding from this day at ON to see what happens a little bit later just to kind of demonstrate this Okay, this is the 0Z sounding from May 16th. Again, you see it's May 17th at 0. That's We'll, we'll talk about Zulu time another time. But if you don't know what Zulu time is, this is basically uh, just universal time scale we use and uh, weather. And that's just, you know, 5.17 of 0Z, which is basically the evening of the 16th. If you're confused, that's okay. It happens. So anyways, uh, let's talk about, again, how has the sounding changed? Well, Suddenly, you know, again, 71 over se or 75 over 71, your surface base cape, it's, it's just immense. It's 4,000. That, that's a lot of cape. Uh, however, again, uh, your mixed layer cape, 2347, that's because if you take a look at, you know, it's a little cool, it's a little drier, but it's nowhere near as warm as 75 over 71 in the lower layer of the atmosphere. And so you see that played out in the mixed layer cape when it's 2347. That's why it's a lower, but that's a more accurate representation of the storm environment that is going on here at Norman. Now, there weren't tornadoes in Norman on this day. They were all along the Red River uh, and west of there. Actually, some northwest of there, too. All, basically, west of Norman. Norman was east of everything for the most part during the day. There is still a little bit of an inversion here in, in the mixed layer, but, you know, nothing that's not being broken by anything worth, it, worth anything. So, basically, when you're looking at soundings, uh, surface-based cape, uh, I guess the big takeaway from this lesson in the skew -T, uh, soundings is that it's easier to calculate because it's all right here mixed layer you know models do it for the most part you can certainly calculate it by hand this lesson is not teaching you that because a we're not teaching the math behind it and b that's a lot more uh, complex to put it mildly but you can kind of see the rough uh, the rough reasoning for why you have you know less mixed layer cape you see rapid drying just above the surface so you have less dew point but it's still uh pretty pretty unstable is the best way to put it if you get over 2000 mix layer cape that's pretty strong instability it's moderate i guess officially classified and we'll look at those uh terms in another lesson just about all about cape but in terms of the skew t uh that's how you look at it i mean you, you see that and it's pretty easy at that point to then figure out 
what we're doing with that. So again, pretty simple. Uh, don't don't overcomplicate this. Your surface space instability, it's useful in some scenarios, but for the most part, you want to be using MLK to measure how unstable an atmosphere really is because that's the more realistic representation. Even though it is prone to some errors, it is a more realistic representation of what a storm is actually going to be dealing with. So until next time, hope you learned something, and we will be back with a couple more lessons on SKU-T, so stay right there.